Today, I'm gonna to show you how I made this. I'm assuming you already have Stable Diffusion installed. If not, I'll leave the relevant links below. I'll be using the Anything version 3 model for this tutorial, which you can get from the Hugging Face website with all the relevant licenses. It's an anime focused model that's free to use. Once you have Stable Diffusion open and Anything version 3 loaded in, type out a prompt. I'm currently starting mine with scenery, masterpiece, best quality, CG, wallpaper, HDR, high quality, extremely detailed and beautiful detailed light. Then put whatever you want the image to be, I've gone for a castle in a city. In the settings I've chosen Eula A, 20 sampling steps, a width of 960 with a height of 512, with a batch size of 7 and a CFG of 7 as well. Keep generating images until you get something that you like. Now, I forgot to do this before I started the tutorial, but you should definitely take the image that you want to use into the Extras tab to upscale it. The reason you keep the original resolution low is so you can generate more images quickly, which is the aim of the game. You should only be going to a higher resolution when you're actually happy with an image. Anyway, to double the size, set the resize to 2 and then change both of the upscalers to Lanxos. The image will now be very close to a standard HD resolution. After that, take the image into Photoshop, go to the Filters tab and then Neural Filters. After the side panel pops up, click on Depth Blur and then Download. It'll take a little while to do this, so just give it a minute or two. I still need to have a proper play around with the blur strength to see how much it affects things, but I've gone for 20 here. After that, you need to click the Output Depth Map Only tab and then click the OK button. Now it's just a matter of getting these exported and taking them into After Effects. I've got them as a JPEG, it can be a PNG, as long as it's high quality it doesn't really matter. Name the file whatever you want and then in After Effects I'm going to create two folders for my assets, sequences and images. Drop those images in and with both of them selected right click and click new comp from selected. I'm making my composition 10 seconds long, I've got the overlap on without any transitions. If yours randomly starts to fade out it's because you didn't have off selected. Once the comp's loaded in, make sure the depth mat is sitting above the other layer. Head over to your effects panel and find a Gaussian blur. Drag that onto the depth mat and then up the strength to 100. I'll explain why we do that in a little bit. But for the time being, select the depth mat layer, click Ctrl plus Shift plus C to make it a pre-comp. Make sure you have this button selected so the blur transfers across to the layer and doesn't stay on the comp. Then, Toggle the visibility off in your main composition, right click and create a new adjustment layer, and then drop a displacement map onto it. Change the displacement map layer to the depth map. Change the next two drop downs to luminance and then the final drop down to stretch map to fit. And then click the tick box for wrap pixels around. Now if you move these sliders around you'll start to see the parallax movement. It's really easy to overdo this effect so I'd recommend keeping it subtle. I'll show you why we blurred the depth map earlier. And as you can see it does this when you've got it off. It completely breaks it. So let's keep the blur on. It's not a perfect effect on its own. The buildings in the foreground get a little bit of a weird bend on them, which I don't like. But regardless, let's set some keyframes to get the initial motion and then we can develop this a little bit further afterwards. I've set the keyframes at the start of the timeline and then I'll just scrub to the end and tweak the values. Hmm, there's not enough change, so let's select those keyframes and then drag them to five seconds instead. That's a little better. Now to fix the bleed issue that the distortion's causing, I'm gonna zoom everything in. The best way to do that is by creating a null object and then pick whipping the castle and depth map layer to it as well. Sometimes After Effects can glitch out a little when you've got the viewing panel set to anything but full, so if you are having trouble, that could be your issue. I'm going to tweak the keyframes again, bring it down to 3 seconds, yeah, that looks nicer to me. I'll click N to shorten the out point. I'll right click and then choose Trim Comp to Work Area. I still don't like the bendiness of the foreground element, so I'm just going to have to cut it out the old school way with the pen tool. The shortcut for that is G. I'll duplicate the castle image and then start drawing around it with the pen tool.
the layer underneath is still going to move causing it to look a little bit strange but we can get around this by scaling up the masked out piece and then we can just get a little clever with the position keyframes. You can always add in a couple of extra elements that complement your composition. I've grabbed some smoke on a black backdrop from Envato Elements, which I'm going to use as clouds. Once I've brought that into the sequence, I've scaled it down and changed the blend mode to screen. Bit too cloudy for me here, so I'll take the opacity down to 20. Scratch that, let's go for 50 instead. That's loads better. Now I'll show you the quick and dirty way of getting this done in the CapCut app. Upload your photo and then in the Styles tab click 3D Zoom Pro and you get this. It's not perfect however, you'll get artifacts and distortions in part of the image. The alternative version is just the 3D Zoom. Similar kind of deal. You'll still get artifacts and cleaning these up, it can take if not more work than doing it the traditional way really. So that's something to consider as well. Now some bonus content from me. If you forgot to upscale the images in automatic 11.11 at the start like I did, you can upscale videos in DaVinci Resolve. Just drop the footage in, right click the top left panel and create a new timeline. Drag the footage into the timeline right click the footage clip and then click on clip attributes. Go down to super scale and turn it to 4x and then turn the sharpness and noise reduction to high. Click OK and then go to the delivery tab on the bottom right. Make sure the target resolution is set to what you want it to be. Add it to the render queue and then click render all. And there you go. I used some of these techniques in a little motion comic I did recently. I'll leave that link at the end of the video too.